Hi Deeksha Didi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Alright, so today we are going to continue with call by value and call by ref- reference, right? So, uh, let's just get started. And uh, we know calling a function by value means when we pass the function some value and the changes it makes in the function does is not reflected outside the function. For example, we pass a variable x uh, to a function y then any changes made to the formal parameter so if you are receiving the variable x as a and any changes made to a will not be reflected outside outside the function as it is called by value and the value a will get changed only and it won't be reflected uh, on x right so that is called by value we are, when we are passing some argument and then uh, that argument is getting changed so the argument that is changed the uh, its changes are not reflected outside so that is called by value or we know that uh, it can be uh, called by reference so a function being called by reference basically means that any changes made to a certain variable inside the function will be reflected outside also for example, let's take the same example. If a uh, variable a, uh, sorry, x is being passed to a function y, right, and it is taking it as a, so any changes made to a will be reflected on x, right? So any changes made to a will be reflected on x. So any changes made inside the function will be reflected outside also. That so that is call by reference. We know the basics of call by value and call by reference. Now we are going to go deep into them, look at examples, and then we are going to see in a tableau form the differences between them. So these two ways are generally differentiated by the type of values passed to them as parameters. So uh, these two ways are generally differentiated by the type of values. The type of value or uh, values change passed to them as parameters. So where we are taking the parameters there, the type of values change. So for example over here in over here in pass by value in this function we are just taking int x and int y right in call by reference what we are taking we are taking pointers of x and uh, so we are taking a pointer of an integer variable over here we are taking a memory location of an integer variable and saving it in the pointer variable x so over here we are uh, we are have a pointer variable that is being created over here an integer variable is created right so basically they are differentiated by the type of values passed to them as parameters so over here the type was uh, so x's type was int over here y's type was int over here but over here x type is a integer pointer right so x type is an integer pointer right over here or over here we are taking x as a reference variable too right so we can either take it as a pointer or we can take it as a reference variable also right so in pass by reference there are two ways to do pass by referencing first by taking a pointer right and uh, basically using those pointer variables right where a memory location is saved and another creating a reference variable right so uh, reference variable is those uh, is a variable where if the value in a reference variable is changed then the variables uh, whichever variable that reference variable is referring to that that variables all value will also change so we have learned about reference variables, pointers, calling by value and all. So we are going to go deep into them. So uh, uh, when we come to the examples, then it will be much more clear for us. So the parameters passed to the function are called actual parameters, whereas the f- parameters received by the function are called formal parameters. Now we have l- learned, we have heard these statements too many times, these terms too many times, and we know the actual parameters are over here that are being passed to the function, and over here are the formal parameters, the parameters that are being received by the function. Now we are going to look at call by value. So over here in call by value method of parameter passing the, va- uh, the in call by value method of parameter passing the values of actual parameters are copied to the functions formal parameters. So they are copied to the functions formal parameters. So over here like uh, we are passing a and b. So now a is copy will be created and it will be saved in x 
B's value will be created and saved in Y. So if A is at a certain memory location, X memory location will be different from A's memory location as it is a copy, right? And B's memory location will be different uh, from Y's memory location. Though if the value that we are passing by uh, from A, right, that will be the value of X, right? So we are passing 10, so the X uh, X value will be 10, but their memory locations will be different, and a copy of A is created, right? So a, a separate memory location is allocated to A and a separate memory location is allocated to X right and same with B and Y a separate memory location is allocated to B and a separate memory location is allocated to Y all right so uh, basically the actual parameters are copied to the functions formal parameters there are two copies of parameters stored in different memory locations right so basically there are two copies uh, 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 of the parameter stored in different memory location one is this copy itself the original parameter a right so a is over here right so uh, uh, a itself is there a copy and then x is also a copy right so they're telling also where one is the original copy and the other is the function copy right so there are two copies of the same variable a so one is the original copy that is this and uh, next to the function copy that is x over here any changes made inside the function are not reflected in the actual parameter of the caller. So any changes we'll make inside this function on x or y, right? So if we change the value of x, we change the value of y, then that change won't be reflected on a and b, All right? Now here is an example both in the C language and in the C++ language. As we are learning C++, we are going to look at the C++ example. So we are including IOStream using namespace standard, and in this we are creating the uh, uh, the we are basically declaring the function swap x in which we are taking uh, we are telling that it will take in two uh, formal arguments that is x and y of integer type, and its return type is void. Now we have the main function, uh, and below it is the definition of the swap x function so swap x function is take uh, is taking in x taking in y right and neither uh, uh, x is not not a pointer nor it is a reference same with y y is not a pointer variable nor it is a reference so now a uh, copy by value will happen when the swap x function will be called in here what we are doing we are creating a variable t we are setting the value of t to x so over here x if for example it is uh, passed as 10 so t's value will be 10 now when we say x equals to y t's value uh, then x value will change to 20 but t's value will remain the same as t is a copy of x now right so if it is a copy of x so any change uh, changes made to x will not be reflected on t so now when we say t equals to x t's value is 10 and when we change the value of x x will get changed x will get set to 20 but that change won't be reflected in t so now t is 10 x is 20 and then when we do y equals to t y is basically your oh what we say y is basically your uh, 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 20 right so y is 20 and we are changing it to t that is 10 so now x was changed to 20 and y was changed to 10 so now the both the numbers have been swapped if x was uh, 10 at in, uh, initially and y was uh, 20 initially then now x is 20 now and y is 10 and when we print x and y we'll get x to be 20 and y to be 10 but over here over here when we say a equals to 10 b equals to 20 we pass it 10 and 20 all the changes all the swapping that happened over here is not reflected outside so over here in over here we'll get printed 20 uh, x is 20 and y is 10 but over here what will be printed we'll get the original values of a and b only we'll get a is 10 and b is 20 because the values that were being passed were passed by a value right and any uh, over here the change uh, there were changes made to these values uh, basically the changes were made over here to x and y but it was not reflected outside as x was a copy of a and uh, y was a copy of b so we get inside function x equals to 20 y equals to 10 so we're getting in the function uh, x equals to 20 y equals to 10 and in the caller we are getting uh, a equals to 10 b equals to 20 so we're getting a equals to 10 b equals to 20 let's just run this ourselves 
so we are getting in the function x equals 20 y equals 10 and in the caller a equals 10 b equals to 20. Thus actual values of a and b remain unchanged even after, after exchanging the values of x and y in the function. So is this example of call by value clear? Yes, clear. Great. So now we are on calling by reference. So there are two ways to call by reference, one by accepting pointer variables and another by accepting a reference variable. Right. So in the place of formal parameters, either we can uh, accept basically have a formal parameter to be a pointer variable or a formal parameter can be a reference variable. So we are going to look at both the examples. So in call by reference method of parameter passing, the address of the actual parameter is passed to the function as the formal parameter. One, the address of the parameter, uh, actual parameter can be passed. So you can pass the memory location, the memory address of your actual parameter right so or the other way is that x uh, like over here where we were basically over here where we had just normal variables we were accepting these as normal variables what we can do we can accept these as reference variables so basically what would happen what would happen it will be like int and x equals to y so now uh, sorry equals to a so when a will be passed over here and over here it will get uh, we will get it over here so what will be happening actually it will be int and x equals to a when int and x is equal to a we have already seen the syntax this and is used to create a reference variable now x will be a reference variable that is pointing to the same memory location as a so if a is pointing to some memory location for example 0 x 1 2 3 if a is pointing to this memory location now x is also pointing to the same memory location so now any changes made in this memory location so for example when we do a equals to 45 then what will happen then what will happen then x value will also change so if you try to print the value of x then then we will get 45 right but uh, when uh, and also when we change the value of x so like x equals to uh, like 20 right note over here we don't have to give and we only have to give it over here once we are creating the reference variable and later when using the reference variable we don't need to give the and uh, basically operator you can say right or the symbol right so when we say x equals to 20 right and then when we try to print the value of a then also we will get 20 so now over here this reference variable means that any changes made to a will change the value of x also and any changes made to x will change the value of a also one is this method right and the other is accepting a memory location accepting a memory address that we are doing over here right we are go going to see both of them in c plus plus only right so over here in call by reference method of parameter passing the address of actual parameter is passed to the function as the formal parameter one is that and other is by accepting a reference variable both the actual and formal parameters refer to the same location right so actual and formal parameters both refer to the same memory location any changes made inside the function are actually reflected in the actual parameters of the caller so now in call by reference any changes you make inside the function that will be also reflected outside of the function so here's an example right so instead of looking at this example first we are going to look at this example and then we are going to do the same thing with pointers also great so over here in C++, first, when uh, ha accepting references by uh, the method of references, so what we are doing, we are creating, uh, we are declaring swap x, which is uh, taking in, uh, basically, uh, which is uh, creating a reference variable over here, will, which is basically having two reference variables. So any value that will be passed will be saved in a reference variable right so basically this is a reference variable in which we will save our uh, for actual parameters value right and basically when we are saving our actual uh, parameter in a reference variable so any changes made to that uh, that reference variable will actually change the actual parameter also 
right so over here we have a equals to 10 b equals to 20 and we are passing it to a uh, swap x right normally like a and b now swap x what it is doing it's like the same as over here it's completely the same thing right that we were doing over here it's completely the same thing the difference is that it is accepting basically x and y are a reference variable so what will happen what will happen our and x basically our and x will be equal to a right so now when we are changing the value of x over here right when we are changing the value of x then the value of a that is over here will also get changed as x is a reference variable of a and same with y y is a reference variable of b right so any changes made to y like over here that will change basically b over here right so as x and y are reference variables so now what is happening x is uh, x value is 10 y value is 20 we are creating a variable a variable t we are saying t equals to x so x value is 10 so it is setting the value of t to be x now t is not a reference variable meaning if any change is made to x that will be reflected in a but it won't be reflected in t and any changes made to a will be reflected in x but will not be reflected on t so t is a normal variable it's a copy of x so it, uh, x's copy will be made so 10 will be saved in some other memory location and then it will be the value of uh, it will be set to t next we have x equals to y so what we are doing we are saying x equals to y x is 10 already and we are changing it to 20 that is y's value so now x was a reference variable so now x is 20 t has not changed right so x is 20 so now over here it will basically reflect over here also so after this statement a will also be 20 and b will also be 20 after till this statement right so till this statement a will be tw uh, 20 and b will be 20 and after this statement when y equals to t will be executed then y is a reference variable of b right so any change made to y is reflected on b also so now when we are changing y to t meaning we are changing y y's value to 10 so what is happening b's value will also change to 10 so in the end x's value is 20 y's value is 10 and because these were reference variables a's value is 20 and b's value is 10 so in the caller when we say uh, uh, print the values of x and y so we'll get 20 as as x value and 10 as y's value right but over here after calling this function right when we basically print the value of a and b also we will still uh, we'll see that the values have been swapped swapped right so uh, we'll uh, get a's value to be 20 and b's value to be 10 right so in the end of this function call both x and y's value will also get swapped and a and b's value will also get swapped right so x and y's values are also getting swapped and a and b's values are also getting swapped right so uh, is this example clear so we'll just convert this example to pointers example also yeah it's clear all right so now this was one way of passing by reference another way of passing by reference is using pointers so what we can say, we can say that we are accepting memory locations of an integer variable. So what we are saying, we, are, we will accept a memory location of an integer variable. And over here, what we are passing, we are passing and b, the, uh, and b and and a, right? So and a will give us the memory location of a, and b will give us the memory location of b, and that is being passed to swap x. Now in swap x, we are going to accept a memory location by giving a star after int right and what we can do we can just say t then we can say t equals to star x we can say star x equals to star y i'll explain all of this in a second and then we can say star y equals to t so that uh, all right great right so uh, this now will work the same i'll explain this in a second but this will work the same way so we are getting oh 
वी विल शो द वैल्यू ऑफ स्टार एक्स एंड स्टार वाई ओवर है राइट सो वी आर गेटिंग ट्वेंटी टेन ट्वेंटी टेन राइट सो नाउ द वैल्यूज ऑफ ए एंड बी एंड एक्स एंड वाई आर गेटिंग स्वॉप्ड बट वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली हैपनिंग और राइट सो द मेमरी लोकेशन ऑफ ए इज बींग पास एंड इट इज बींग सेव्ड इन एन एक्स वेरिएबल सो नाउ एक्स इज होल्डिंग द मेमरी लोकेशन ऑफ ए एंड नाउ द मेमरी लोकेशन ऑफ बी इज ऑल्सो बींग पास एंड वाई इज होल्डिंग द मेमरी लोकेशन ऑफ बी नेक्स्ट वी आर क्रिएटिंग टी वी आर सिंग टी इक्वल्स टू स्टार एक्स राइट सो वी आर डी रेफरेंसिंग एक्स ओवर हेयर दैट विल गिव अस टेन बाई डी रेफरेंसिंग एक्स विल गेट टेन राइट एंड दैट वी आर सेविंग इन टी सो नाउ टी इज वैल्यू इज टेन then we are dereferencing x but on the left hand side so now we are dereferencing it to change the value inside the memory location right so we are dereferencing x so now uh, we are directly trying to change uh, the mem uh, the value inside the memory location of a right and what we are changing it to we are changing it to the dereference value of y when we dereference y we'll get 20 and we are directly by dereferencing x we are directly changing the value of uh, a basically whatever value is there in a's memory location we are directly changing over here to 20 right so what we are what is happening the memory location over here saved in x is getting dereferenced right so we are dry, directly trying to manipulate the memory location that was saved in this variable and then we are setting it to the dereference value of y by as a memory address of b when dereferencing it will get 20 and it will basically change the value of a also to 20 and then what we are doing we are dereferencing y and setting it to t so we uh, after dereferencing y so basically we are directly manipulating b's memory location and whatever value of uh, is there we are changing it to t's value t had 10 in it so basically on in that memory location of b right uh, the value is getting changed to 10 so basically what is happening a's value is being uh, set to 20 and b's value is being set to 10 so when we uh, dereference x we'll get 20 when we dereference y we'll get 10 and that will be shown and over here also when we print uh, a we'll get 20 and b uh, we'll get because what was happening over here we are just directly changing the memory location the value in the memory location of a and b right instead of creating references and then changing them we are directly manipulating the values that are there in the memory location of a and b so that is also working perfectly fine so is this example clear yeah it's clear great so the uh, thus actual values of a and b get changed after exchanging values of x and y so now we are on difference between the call by value and call by reference right so what is the difference main differences right so there are many differences the following table is the differences between call by value and call by reference method of parameter passing right so call by value while calling a function we pass the values of a variable to it right so uh, when calling the uh, function we pass the values of a variable to it such functions are known as call by values so basically this is the definition when we pass values of variables to it then it is called call by value now in call by reference while calling a function instead of passing the values of variables we pass the address of variables or we pass the location of variables right all in call by reference we create uh, in the uh, where we are giving the formal parameters one is by passing the address of our variables the another way is uh, that over here when accepting basically when accept uh, in our formal parameters we are accepting the uh, values in a reference variable right the second way is by accepting the value in a reference variable so over here we are accepting the value in the reference variable so this is also calling by reference right so uh, there are two ways for, for calling by reference one by passing it a pointer or the address of a variable or by uh, by basically uh, in a formal parameters giving reference variable so creating reference variables in a formal parameter 
Now in call by value in this method, the value of each variable in the calling function is copied into corresponding dummy variables of the called function. So what is happening that each variable that we are passing is copied into a new variable, right? So it is a new memory location is allocated to X and Y and the values are uh, getting copied into X and Y and a new as it is a new memory location right so uh, there's a new memory location of x and y so basically the memory location of x is different from the memory location of a in call by value and the memory location of y is different from the memory location of b in call by value and in call by reference in this method the address of actual variables so the address of actual variables in the calling function is copied into the dummy variables of the call function so what is happening the actual variables address so whatever is the memory location of the actual variable that address is being copied into the dummy, dummy variable so dummy variable that we create over here the value was getting copied right and over here the address is getting copied right so that, that is the difference now in call by value with this method the changes made to the dummy variable in the function called have no effect on the values of actual variables in the fun calling function so basically uh, there is no effect on the actual variables so any changes to the formal parameters is not reflected in the actual parameters but in call by reference with this method using addresses we would have access to the actual variables so we'll have uh, uh, access to the actual variables and hence we would be able to manipulate them so we are directly manipulating the actual uh, uh, the values that are saved in the actual variables memory right so we are directly uh, manipulating the memory of the actual variables so we are basically in call by reference using the addresses of those variables we are changing the variables from inside the function now in call by values we cannot alter the values of actual variables through function calls so in call by values we cannot alter the values of actual variables through function calls right so uh, uh, what is happening we can't alter the values right so the actual variables uh, uh, values we can't alter through the function calls but in call by reference we can alter the values of variables through function calls right Next, we have values of variables are passed by the simple technique. So basically, we are passing in the basic way, right? By just giving the variable which we want to pass. But in uh, pass, call by reference, pointer variables are necessary to define to store the address or values of variables, right? So over here, in call by reference, we were using normal A, uh, basically a normal uh, the method right we are accepting the normal integer variables and we were passing normal variables and over here in call by reference what we were doing we had uh, we were what we were doing we are ac we were accepting uh, pointer variables we were accepting integer pointer variables so it was a bit more complex so in call by value this method is preferred when we have to pass some small values that should not be changed so uh, when we want to basically pass values that sh should not be changed from inside the function then we use call by value but uh, uh, when uh, uh, the call by uh, reference uh, method is preferred when we have to pass a large amount of data to the function so when we have to la pass a large amount of data to the function so instead of using call by value and copying it into a new variable and then it being passed uh, we can just directly pass the memory location of that data so that data that memory location then can be further dereferenced to access to get access to that data so this is also used when we have to pass large amount of data or we want to change the values of the actual parameters from inside the function right and basically this was the difference between call by value and call by reference so now we can move on to the next concept that is inline functions uh, sorry default arguments in c++ right before inline functions we have default arguments in c++ all right so i hope till now everything is clear so that we can move on yeah everything's clear all right so a default argument is a value provided in a function declaration so it's a value provided in a function declaration that is automatically assigned by the compiler if the calling function doesn't provide a value for the argument so what is happening if you don't want to provide a value 
to a certain argument right and but you want to accept in some cases you want to accept a value in some cases you don't want that value then what you can do you can give a default parameter default parameter is when uh, is used like basically you you know over here in the parameter only you are saying int z equals to zero so if you don't pass a value to z it will be by default set to zero by the compiler right so in uh, so basically uh, basically what is happening a default argument is a value so it's a value provided in a function declaration so it's provided in a function declaration over here that is op automatically assigned by the compiler that is automatically assigned by the compiler if the calling function if the calling function if the calling function doesn't provide a value so it's not providing a value so it doesn't provide the value for the argument so over here no value is being provided for z and w so the compiler automatically sets the value of z to the default uh, value that we are giving over here that is zero and it's automatically setting the value of w that uh, to what we are giving over here that is also zero right so in case uh, in case any value is passed the default value is overridden so if we are passing the value of z or and w so like over here we are passing the value of z then the value is overridden so instead of z being 0 now it will be the value that we are passing that is 25 right so now this is also known as an optional parameter where uh, you if if you want you can pass the value if you don't want you need not pass the value in an optional va parameter as there's a default value set over here so that default value will be there uh, set as the uh, parameters value if you don't pass any value right so it's an optional parameter also so it's also called an optional parameter so one the following is a simple c++ example to demonstrate the use of default arguments so this is an example that is uh, demonstrating the use of default arguments here we don't have to write three sum functions only one function works by using the default values for the third and fourth arguments right so over here what is happening we have a sum function right so uh, in sum functions it can be you can have cases where you want to add two values there will be cases where you want to add three values or there will be cases where you want to add four values but always you won't want to add four values or always you won't want to add two values so you can ha also have substitute values that uh, uh, that you will give using default arguments right so over here what we have we have the sum function that is taking in x integer x integer y integer z that has a default value of zero so if no value for z will be passed then its value will be set to zero and uh, uh, in, uh, integer w is also a parameter uh, to which if no value is passed then it is set to zero right so so over here what we are doing in the first uh, case we are just <coughs> calling the sum function and passing it 10 and 15 so now over here is getting the value of x and it is getting the value of y it's not getting the value of z so it is setting it to uh setting uh, is setting it as the default value that is zero right so z's value is set as a default value that is zero and uh, it's not getting the value of w also so that its value is also set to the default value that is zero so now we are get uh, basically what this will have it what it uh, what it will do it will do 10 plus 15 plus 0 plus 0 so that is 25 right so this was an example of uh, where we were not passing the value of the default argument now when we pass the value to one of the default arguments then what happens so basically 10 is the value of x 15 is the value of y and 25 is the value of z so basically z is also has a default value so if we didn't pass 25 it would it would have been set to 0 but now we are overriding 0 uh, uh, we are overriding 0 and setting it to 25 so we are setting z's value to 25 but we, we are not giving any value to w so w will basically take the default value that is 0 right so over here what will happen we'll have 10 plus 15 plus 25 plus 0 so that will be 50 right so it will return 50 and now over here when we are passing values for the default arguments also so basically x value is 10 y value is 15 z value is 25 so it is overriding the value of z and we are, it is setting it to 25 and we are also overriding the value of w and we are setting it to 30 
सो बेसिकली वॉट विल हैपन ओवर हेयर टेन प्लस फिफ्टीन प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस थर्टी सो दैट विल बी एट्टी राइट सो दैट विल बी एट्टी सो इन द फर्स्ट केस वी आर गेटिंग ट्वेंटी फाइव इन द सेकेंड केस वी आर गेटिंग फिफ्टी एंड इन द थर्ड केस वी आर गेटिंग एट्टी so default arguments are so powerful when we needed to add two uh, two numbers we only gave two numbers and the default values were over here substituted for z and w now over here when we added needed to add three numbers that added three numbers and then when we needed to add four numbers that added four numbers right so default uh, arguments are very 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 useful and powerful right so over here we are getting 25 50 and 80 right great so now here is the example uh, explanation also of this program that in statement 1 only two values are passed hence the variable z and w take the default values of 0 in statement 2 three values are passed right three values are passed so the value of z is overridden with 25 in statement 3 four values are passed so values of z and w are overridden with 25 and 30 respectively all right so this was the first basically use case of default values over here there is another point right so over here we have another point right so if the function overloading is done containing default arguments so now over here they are using the concept of overloading also so they are telling if we overload functions that we saw in the first class only overloading uh, so first class of functions only right so uh, if function over overloading is done right so if it is done containing the default arguments so if you overload functions containing the default arguments then we need to make sure it is not ambiguous to the compiler so one of the uh, uh, basically over function overloading ambiguity errors that we saw was uh, when having default arguments that could lead to error right so uh, with default arguments when we are function overloading uh, then we need to make sure it's not ambiguous to the compiler right so we always have to make sure it is not ambiguous to the compiler otherwise it will throw an error the following is the modified version of the above program so over here we are overloading the sum function one over here is taking x uh, y in two integers and then it is taking two more integers z and w which have a default value of 0 and 0 right and then this was our basically previous function now we have next sum function that is overloading this sum function right and it is taking in x it is taking in y integer right but now its default arguments are float over here and this of w is also float right so over here when we pass it 10 and 15 we will get an error so why are we getting an error when passing it 10 and 15 because when we are passing it 10 then over here this method will get integer 10 right and uh, this method should also get integer 10 and when we are passing it 15 this method is also getting integer 10 uh, 15 and this method is also getting integer 15 both of them were uh, accepting the first two parameters as integer and the next two were optional right so if the next two were optional so now what is happening both of them are accepting integers this is also accepting integer this is also accepting integer as the first two arguments so now the both the uh, both of them are getting integers so now default arguments what is the case of default arguments if we want to give them a value we can if we don't want to we could not right so over here these are optional so now we are not giving those value them values right so when we are not giving them values then z is set to 0 w is set to 0 and over here z is set to 0 w is set to 0 the values that we are providing to is over here right but now this this is an ambiguity error why because 10 can be passed to x over here also and over here also and 15 can be passed to y over here also and over here also right so basically these default arguments are not playing a role in overloading in this example right as it is there's a uh, basically an ambiguity error because uh, both uh, both of the cases is uh, basically should work right passing 10 and 15 over here also should work and passing 10 and 15 over here should also work so both the cases should also work so it is getting confused that what 
इट शुड डू राइट सो इट इज लीडिंग टू एन एम्बिग्विटी एर कॉल ऑफ ओवरलोडेड सम इंट इंट इज एम्बिग्वस राइट राइट सो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद दिस एग्जाम्पल ओनली इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास एज द क्लास हैज ओनली वन मिनट लेफ्ट सो लेट जस्ट कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय